natural isolates. You've heard of menthol? Yeah, mentholiptus, menthol sweets, yeah, menthol crystals. Menthol comes from where? Peppermint oil, yeah? Basically, it's peppermint oil, if you freeze peppermint oil, the menthol crystals will fall out of solution. So if we take those crystals and we'll probably wash them with alcohol just to clean them up a little bit so there's no peppermint smell, we get a pure menthol crystal. So it's a chemical. It's a natural chemical. Yeah? We, we call this a natural chemical because there's no chemical reaction being involved. We only use cooling. We only use temperature to separate them. Menthol from mint, which is the mentha species. Okay, the reason I did that was because OL on the end of a chemical name usually means it's what? Has an alcohol group. So menthol is the alcohol group found in mentha. So that's your first like touch on chemistry. <laughs> Another one I'll talk about is cedrol. Anybody like to guess where cedrol comes from? Cedarwood, yeah. It's the alcohol found in cedarwood. And it's a crystal too. So if you get cedarwood oil and you freeze it, you'll find that crystals drop to the bottom, sediment on the bottom. And those crystals are cedrol the alcohol found in cedarwood. Now, that's using cooling. Another alternative is we can heat. Yeah? So, in heating, we use a thing called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is, is the same thing that they use in oil refineries yeah, to separate hexane from pentane. Yeah. What we can do is take something like clove oil yeah, and we can warm it. As we, as we warm the clove oil, the more volatile components, the, called the terpenes, will go up, drop down, go up, drop down. Eventually, because the smaller molecules will tend to fall into a band, yeah, there. Then the medium-sized molecules will fall into bands there. And then the heavy molecules, the bigger molecules, the sesquiterpenes, will fall into bands there. I, I liken this a little bit to like traffic. If you get a, a road through town, yeah? As, as things come to the traffic lights, yeah? all the motorcycles get to the front, the cars get the next level, and then the, the trucks get caught behind. Yeah? So this same sort of thing is happening. Yeah? It warms, these are glass, cooler glass um, beads, or ceramic beads, drop, drop, and eventually fall into bands. And you can separate each component of the essential oil. And to get, to get a good distillation, the column has to be very high. And that's why refineries, 30 meters sometimes tall for, a, for a, a distillation column. This band would be the clove terpenes.
This band in the middle would be something called the alcohol of clove oil. What's the, anybody know the, the, the uh, scientific name for clove? Eugenia, yeah, Eugenia. So this is the alcohol found in clove oil. It's called eugenol. And last but not least, we get the sesquiterpenes. These are bigger molecules. And ah. we can call it clove sesquiterpenes, but the main one is called caryophylline. So why would we do this? Well, the same as we did for the mint oil. We get, from menthol, we get, just get that cooling effect. We don't have to have the mintiness as well. So in a pure, really, really good menthol, it's just cool, not minty. Likewise here, with the clove terpenes, we get freshness. From the eugenol, we get the, the typical clovey character. And then from the caryophylline, we get like a woody a woody character. That woodiness that you get from the clove buds when you, s you smell them. Yeah? Like a dusty sort of church pew sort of smell. So fractional distillation is used for our clove. Um, it can be used for our rosewood where the main ingredient is something called linalol. Ho oil is another one that's used. But linalol gets its name because it was first found in linalol berries. I mean, I wouldn't actually know a linalol berry if you put one in front of me now. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the first time they found this chemical called linalol, it was the alcohol found in linalol berries. But from pine, or cedar wood, you can get a very important terpene and it's called pinene. Yeah. That E-N-E -E on the end means it's not an alcohol, basically. Yeah. It's got no, no functional group. But that pinene is a really important starting point for making synthetic aroma chemicals. So pinene is natural but then it's used as the starting point to make other, other materials. So you'll see a lot of our common names in the, the perfume names. They originate from quite logical names, you know, the common names that we know. They also have chemical names, yeah, which are really, really like long and complicated. Now natural isolates, it's difficult to uh, say how many percent, but probably something in the region of 10% in a perfume. But for example, in, in a cheap, a cheap um, dishwashing liquid perfume, we might use D-limonene. D-limonene would come from what? From citrus, yeah, from citrus oils. First discovered in Lemon, yeah, limon, and the ene means terpene, terpene found. It could be 80% of the formula, yeah, so for natural isolates. Uh, one other method for preparing the isolates is to use selective solvent. So what we do is we get a big vat with two solvents, for example, ethanol, and pentane and then we put our essential oil into there and then some of the essential oil dissolves in the ethanol and another part of the essential oil dissolves in the pentane and so we can separate individual components. Yeah. That's called selective solvent extraction.